All right, whenever you're ready. Welcome. Part two of this video is devoted to analyzing in some detail exactly what's going on with the distances and times in Zeno's paradox because it leads to a mathematical tool that is very, very useful. So we're going to need some numbers and some particulars. Let's take uh, the rabbit and the turtle and give them some speeds. The rabbit runs along at five feet per second. Turtle runs along at three feet per second. And let's make the head start ten feet. So those are numbers that apply to the story now. And we're going to keep track now of what happens as the rabbit advances to this first point and the turtle to the next. We're actually going to write down expressions. To do this, you only need one formula. It's one you learn in high school. Distance is rate times time. This relates the three quantities, distance, rate, and time. That's all you need. All right, here's a chart of what's happening step by step. I'm going to break the story up into intervals. Interval one is this. It's where the rabbit runs from the start to point one. All right, that takes time one. And then the rabbit runs from point one to point two. That takes time two. And the next stage, time three, and so on. So here's the infinite list of times, the infinite list of points or intervals, same count. And now distance equals rate times time. So how far does the rabbit advance? The rabbit is running five feet per second. The rabbit is traveling t1 seconds. So five times t1, rate times time, that's the rabbit's distance traveled. And the turtle correspondingly moves during that same time interval three times t1. The turtle's rate is three. 3 times t1 is the turtle's distance. And this goes on. Next interval, 5 times t2 for the rabbit, 3 t2 for the turtle. Next interval, 5 t3 for the rabbit, 3 t3 for the turtle. That goes on forever. Now, hidden in here are some patterns we can solve for things. For example, this first time is easy to find. Time, distance is rate times time. I don't have to write that again. The distance, the head start, is 10 feet. That's from here to here. That is the same thing as 5 times t1. So we've got t1. t1 has to be 2. So we figured out the first number. To find the rest, you just have to make one observation. And that is that the distance the rabbit runs here is the same as the distance that the turtle runs here. All right, that distance is the same for both of them, the distance from one to two. Well, the turtle covers that right here. The turtle covers that first distance from one to two in the first interval. The rabbit covers that distance in the second. All right, say that again. The rabbit covers that same distance the turtle moving from one to two, the rabbit moves from one to two in the second interval. These are the same. All right, then this goes on. The rabbit covers from two to three, and turtle covers from two to three, but they're offset by one interval. All right, this goes on forever. So these match up. Now, we have an infinite list of equations. Five T two is three T one. 5, 3, t3 is 3, t2, and so on. We can solve those for t's, and you come up with this very simple relationship. Each t, each successive t, is 3 fifths of the previous t. In words, each time value is 3 fifths, or 60%, that's 0.6 of the preceding time value. That means the sequence of time values is, starting with the first, 2, and then 60% of 2, 
and then 60% of 60% of 2, and then 60% of 60% of 60% of 2, so that it looks like this list of numbers. So we want to find the total 2 plus 2 times 0.6 plus 2 times 0.6 squared, plus 2 times 0.6 cubed. That's the total time that it requ is required for the rabbit to catch the turtle. In general, a sequence of numbers that follows a pattern like this one is called a geometric sequence. Starts with a number a, and then multiplies each number to get the next by some fixed number r. So in our example, a is 2, and r is 3 fifths, or 0.6. The last step of solving Zeno's paradox is to figure out how to add up the infinite number of terms in a geometric sequence. Okay, so our problem is to figure out how to add up an infinite number of terms in this pattern called geometric sequence. The way we're going to go at it is geometrically and visually. I've made a picture here of our sequence. This square represents the first number in our list. This is 2, so pretend that this is 2 somethings. And then this next one represents the next number in our list, 60% of 2. You can see that this side is a little more than half. In fact, it's precisely 60% of the previous. And then this square, the third square, is 60% edge length of the previous. So that by stacking or bumping these squares together in a line, we're actually getting a picture of what it looks like to have t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus t4. I've got all the way up to t7, and this would go on forever. And it's going to add up to something. We're interested in how far that is. What is that number? All right, here's the way we're going to do that. I'm going to start by playing a little rearrangement game with these squares. And you'll see in a minute why I made squares. I'm going to stack them corner to corner, tip to tip so that there's a long diagonal, stringing them together. And I'm going to examine this picture a little bit. I've taken the opportunity to prepare a drawing ahead of time. So this is a drawing of this arrangement. Big square, next square, next square. Now it's slightly rescaled, but you can see it's the same idea. Here are the squares going up forever. What we are interested in is what does it add up to if you take this number, this is our a, this is some portion of a, here is a portion of that, here is a portion of that. So here's our geometric sequence. a, a r, a r squared, a r cubed, and so on. We want to know where does it come to. You can see it comes to something because this line through the corners of the squares goes off, and this line through the, this uh, other set of corners of the squares meets it somewhere. These two have to meet. That's where this sequence comes to an end, even though there isn't really an end. It goes forever. But that's where they will meet. This distance right here is the sum that we're interested in. We want to know what is a plus a r, plus a r squared, plus dot, dot, dot. All right, how are we going to get there? You get there with a neat trick. I'm going to focus on the next line up and simply make two observations about this line up. This line is a r, a r squared, a r cubed, and so on forever. a r plus a r squared plus a r cubed plus dot 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 and you see how it compares to the previous it's just the previous list with a lopped off if this is s this is s minus a well there's one other way they're related you might notice i'm going to write down s minus a s minus a is a r a r squared a r cubed there's a match up here Every term in S minus A matches with a term in S. Uh, and the difference between them is this one has an R in it. This one has a higher power of R in it. This one has one higher. You can see that S minus A, you can get there just by taking everything in S and multiply by R. All right, you have to think about that for a moment. S minus A is this list. 
but it's the same as this list, everything times r. So there's an equation. S times r, that list times r, is the same as that list minus a. That can be solved. You get a solution. S is a divided by 1 minus r. That algebra is an exercise. That is the solution. That is the neat shorthand formula for how to add up an infinite number of terms in a geometric sequence. All right, let's finish by applying this to our Zeno's problem, the rabbit and the turtle. We had the list 2, 60% of 2, 60% of that, and so on forever. This is a geometric sequence where there's our A, there's our R, and we wanted to know what is the total time. This expression is the total time that it takes for the rabbit to catch the turtle. We just worked out this answer. That's what that derivation was on the table with the paper. S is equal to A over 1 minus R. So we can plug in, in this particular story, A is 2, R is 60% or 3 fifths. This simplifies to exactly 5. <coughs> Five seconds is how long it takes the rabbit to catch the turtle. That is not infinity. So we have done two things with this pair of stories. Zeno's paradox is a very interesting story because it has a flaw, and the flaw is subtle. You have to think for a minute about what's wrong. Second, we examined the pieces of the story in some detail and found a very useful pattern, useful because it comes up a lot in many, many areas of applied mathematics. That's called the geometric sequence. And we have found a very, very nice shorthand formula for summing the terms of a geometric sequence. That's the story of Zeno's paradox.